Well, there are, all along have been tribal groups uh, in uh, the Sunni Arab provinces uh, who, who are uh, pre predominantly rural, by the way, uh, who came to the U.S. and were interested in various forms of alliance. They were interested in what they could get out of such an alliance. And uh, the U.S. tended to dismiss them. Uh, and so they were, uh, uh, they were without a role, really, uh, and uh, sometimes were co-opted by the more violent, uh, uh, either the remnants of the Ba'ath Party or the uh, Salafi jihadis, the, 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 the radical uh, Sunni groups. And um, more recently, General Petraeus uh, uh, ordered that they be taken more seriously, that they be given some American support. And they are perfectly willing, uh, and tribal uh, leaders like this have been like this in Iraq through through the ages. They're perfectly willing to uh, take uh, money from the ruling uh, uh, clique in Baghdad and uh, then to go off and fight whoever they want them to fight. So that's their that's the role that they're playing now. Uh, we are bribing them to do this. It should be very clear that it's not a matter of political loyalty. And uh, some of this is troubling. Some of the groups that we're dealing with, you know, are, we call them tribes, but they're really a kind of mafia. Uh, they were involved in a lot of criminality. Uh, and then there's no evidence uh, that, that, that most of these groups have any interest whatsoever in uh, cooperating with the al-Maliki Shiite government. Uh, they, they're tired of these foreigners in their backyard, and they're glad to get rid of the Moroccans and the uh, Saudis. Uh, who have come in to blow things up. Uh, but it's, it doesn't seem to be a step towards Iraqi national reconciliation. The, the astonishing thing was that uh, the U.S. officer corps uh, blew these people off uh, mm -hmm. for so long uh, instead of taking advantage of these possibilities. So it's at least a little more savvy than, than how we were operating in 2004 and 2005 and I guess 2006. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is the thing that you have to admire about David Petraeus. Is he was more or less the the, uh, uh, the governor of Mosul, uh, which is a northern Sunni Arab, uh, largely Sunni Arab area, and uh, he uh, is a canny man. He has a PhD in international relations from Princeton, and he went in there and he figured out who was important. He would go to them and say, "What do you need?" And uh, he made uh, ties with with the great uh, Sunni Arab families of the north uh, and that's how he knew to do this because they told him uh, that this is the way things are done and he listened to them. And he's somebody who's you know he's read Lawrence, uh, he, he knows the history of uh, counterinsurgency in the Middle East uh, so um, it, it, it's not rocket science it, and, and, and I think most area studies people would have told the US military this is what you need to do right off the bat but but at least Petraeus is uh, among our officers who's, who's been savvy about this. Obviously the, the Sunnis uh, dominated the Iraqi state for most of the last I guess all of the last century up until the last few years and I guess one would say that, in, in a sense, they did for the previous centuries since, since the Ottoman Empire was, was Sunni-based. I don't know, maybe that, that might be a little off, but... No, no, it's true. Okay, well, certainly in, in, in living memory, they, a, a large minority, but a minority currently of the population, dominated the country. From, to the extent that we can get a sense of, of, of the perspective of that community, um, I, I, guess I, would, I guess I would frame it this way is do they still think well hey why you know why do we sign up to this deal now when obviously the americans aren't going to be here forever and maybe when they're gone we fight it out and we're back on top sure well that's what drives the ins the sunni arab insurgency uh is a conviction that uh they were on top before they can be on top again uh they can make a coup when the Americans go. Uh, the Shiites seem to be powerful, but they're paper tigers from the Sunni Arab point of view. Uh, most of them are slum kids. Uh, uh, they, they don't have serious military training or experience. The Sunni Arab officer corps fought the Iran-Iraq war. They fought the Gulf War. Uh, they know what they're doing militarily. So they think, uh, you know, let, let, uh, let the Americans leave. Let's import uh, some heavy weaponry from our friends in the Arab world, and uh, we'll take care of the business. Uh, so why would we make political bargains now? 
But I would say that there's some evidence that that kind of bloody-minded determination to come back to power, uh, even if it means massacres and coups and so forth, seems to be slipping among the Sunni Arabs. Uh, and uh, it's hard to know the, the veracity of some of these reports, but uh, there was a report in the Arabic press that is it Ibrahim Duri, who was one of Saddam's right-hand men, and I think who still is leading uh, a certain number of insurgent operations uh, is, is in Iraq. Is he the one who's, who's like nominally still the head of the, the sort of the, the Ba'ath Party in exile, so to speak? Uh, well, they're not in exile. They, they appear to be a, a based in Mosul. <laughs> right, but I mean in, in uh, figurative exile. Yeah, yes, uh, the, under, the, the Ba'ath Power underground, right. uh, the Ba'ath uh, Party underground. Well, uh, it is said that the Ba'ath Party has split into four major groups. Uh, and is it Ibrahim Duri uh, heads one of those groups. And in the past, at least, he has been the most uh, unwilling to compromise in any way. And uh, again, I don't, it's difficult. These things show up on the internet and it's, it's hard to know. But there's a communique from him uh, recently which seems to show some willingness to, uh, uh, to compromise uh, given, you know, certain political arrangements. And uh, uh, it's, um, uh, and the other uh, heads of the other Abath parties have been uh, also talking about negotiating, about forming a political wing, uh, you know, like the Sinn Féin uh, of the IRA, uh, of the Irish Republican Army, uh, uh, which, uh, which pursued political goals uh, uh, and was in contact with the, uh, um, with the, with the uh, violent wing. Uh, likewise, they, they seem to be thinking in those terms. Uh, they wanted to have a big conference in Damascus to kick this off. And it was said then, last winter, that Dury opposed it uh, because he was afraid that it might lead to compromise. But more recently, uh, uh, the, the communiques, in his name at least, seem to be softening. Well, my view of, uh, of places like Iraq, and I saw this in Lebanon uh, earlier on as well, is that uh, political identity, political arrangements are far more fluid uh, than we're used to seeing them in uh, North Atlantic societies. Uh, and so now everybody in America is convinced that Iraqis are Sunni Shiite or Kurd and that's the way they'll always be and that's what's most important to them and that's the basis on, on which politics goes forward. But you know that's not true. Uh, uh, there, uh, as you said, uh, you know, the, the Sutter movement among the Shiites wants a strong central state. They can ally with the Sunni Arabs on that issue, which is also important to them. Uh, the, uh, there are tribal alliances across these uh, religious and ethnic boundaries. Uh, and, uh, and things flip over and change. Uh, it's a kaleidoscope, you know, it's not set in stone. So uh, I think it can go either way. You, you, could, you could go towards uh, a kind of Yugoslavia kind of meltdown of the country, uh, which would, uh, you know, end up in its dismemberment for the long term. Uh, but the, the possibility of, uh, of Iraqis getting it together across some of these uh, ethnic and religious boundaries is also there. And, and that tends to be, in my view, far too readily discounted. So here's here's the other thing in the, in this in the, in the Petraeus report in this whole debate, the the trump card that the supporters of the current policy pull out again and again is, I, I think if they were to put it candidly it would basically be this: sure we haven't made any progress yet, sure it's really bad, but it'll be so much worse if we leave. Ergo, we can't leave. So what is what is your sense? Um, what are the range of possibilities? What's the most likely possibility? If we just say hypothetically, uh, President Bush decided tomorrow to say, look, we, we're getting out. Um, we're going to start pulling out troops today and by next summer, uh, besides uh, a contingent to protect our embassy, we're out of there. What, what happens? I think it's a wrong way of thinking about what's going on. Okay. Uh, we are uh, trying to manage a conflict from the margins uh, with, with relatively few troops given the population of the place and with relatively few levers of, of uh, authority and power on the political elements. Uh, and so we're, we're trying to intervene 
strategically and, and to manage the conflict as well as we can. And the conflict is going on. You know, Baghdad is being ethnically cleansed of Sunnis, and it has been being so dramatically during the, during the surge. Uh, that's not something we seem to be able to control. Uh, so if it's the case that we're managing the conflict from the margins, then whether we manage the conflict from within side the country or, for, or, or outside the country, it seems to me not, not the most important thing in the world. Uh, and uh, I think violence will go on if we have a big pr true presence there. Violence will go on if we don't. Uh, the, the real question is uh, what kind of interventions uh, we can make uh, if we're on the outside uh, that would stop things from escalating uh, in a very unpleasant way for Iraq and for the region and, and for the world. Uh, and if we were, if we withdrew the troops, which I, I think we should, uh, I think then you'd have to uh, throw your resources into regional diplomacy in a big way. What you don't want is a proxy war between Iran and Saudi Arabia. And so all of your efforts have to be put in to uh, reconciling Saudi Arabia and Iran, make, having them make nice with one another, and they are so far interested. They, they, you know, President Ahmadinejad of Iran has gone to Riyadh. Uh, King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia has uh, lines open to Tehran. Uh, and, and they've been much wiser about this uh, uh, than, than the Bush administration. Uh, so, um, you know, they're going to have inevitably patrons, uh, patron-client relations with groups inside Iraq. And some of what's been happening, you know, with regard to the improvement in Al Anbar has been behind the scenes, big Saudi uh, and uh, money and Jordanian inter interventions of various sorts. And, and people don't talk about this because it's embarrassing uh, to, the, to the regional powers. But uh, if they can do that now, they can do that after the U.S. troops are out. And in fact, the U.S. troops have had almost nothing to do with the change situation in, in El Anbar. Got it. Okay, we, we, we need to wrap up. I want to thank you for your time. And uh, hopefully we can check in again soon because this is um, it's it's great to t it's great to talk to someone uh, uh, about Iraq who, who who knows what they're talking about, which is which is uh, which is something of a rarity in in the debate in this country today. Uh, so, Professor Juan Cole, thank you very much, and we will thank check you, back with you soon.